Good morning, dear students. Welcome to our contact uh, classes. Today we are going to talk about research project phase one, that is uh, your research proposal. I'll take you through some guidelines on how to prepare your research proposal and what it is that is expected from you. Uh, the presentation today will look at some of the reflective thinking questions, some questions that you need to think about the important information concerning a research proposal as well as the outline for, of the research proposal and then some of the important tips that you should look out for to guide you further when preparing your research proposal. You might have questions like, what do I want to study? That is a question that most of the students ask themselves. What is it that I would like to study? Why is the topic important? You, you need to ask yourself that question. So whenever you, 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 you come up with a topic, when you frame a topic, you need to ask yourself, why is it important, especially to your area of interest, and how is it significant within the subject areas covered in my course? What problems will it help solve? So you need to understand, because when it comes to research proposal, you propose uh, a study that will help you solve a specific problem. How does it build upon and hopefully go beyond research already conducted on the topic? So you need to look at um, studies that were carried out in your area of interest and then you need to understand how you can build, especially on their knowledge. What others have find out already? What are your new contributions? What is it that you are going to to do. What exactly should I plan to do? That is a question that you need to understand. And can I get it done in the time available? You know, we are talking about time frame. If you come up with a time frame that in six, uh, six months you need to be able to carry out this study, you, you have to actually uh, work on that time, time frame, on that timeline that by this time I should work on then already framing my topic and then you need to come up with the research questions as well as the, the problem statement. And then within maybe two weeks, you should have already a, a proposed topic, for example. Okay, um, more important information that you must consider when it comes to research proposal, and these are really some of the uh, requirements as per your institution. You are required to prepare a research proposal in your area of expertise. Choose any topic of your choice. Ensure that your proposal is 12 pages long, excluding table of contents and the references. So you should have 12 pages. That is for your proposal. And make sure that your proposal is typed and you are using uh, Times New Roman and the font size should be 12 and 1.5 line spacing. Also use the APA format for both in-text citations in the reference uh, list very important you have to to reference you have to credit source of information even if you paraphrase make sure that you use the in-text citation as per the APA requirements looking at the research proposal it should be presented in three sections we have section one that is uh, introduction you have to introduce now your topic that you have to do it there, give a bit of background information so that we understand where is it coming from, what is happening, uh, what what is trending, that is, you talk about it there, what current status, you know, current situation. And then section two, there is a literature review. Here you have to review literature that has been carried out, you know, studies that were done already in your area of interest, you, you do it here, and we'll further discuss all these sections. And then section three is methodology. You have to talk about the methods that you are going to use. Remember, a proposal is a proposed idea. It's not something that you have carried out already, and also it should be presented in future tense because it's an idea that you are proposing and you are going to carry it out. Don't forget the references, also very important part of the proposal. Remember, I spoke about in-text citation as well as a reference list that you need to compile at the end of your proposal. Looking at section one, which is introduction, we have to, we have background of the study, 
there you must give the background. You have to explain um, where is it, where is your study, what, uh, where is your study coming from, why that study, you need to actually justify your study there. Statement of a problem, these are also some of the subsections there, we have statement of a problem, questions or objectives of a study, rationale or significance of the study, all these ones, uh, these subsections will further look at them and the limitations of the study as well as the limitations of the study and don't forget that to define operational terms. So we have a sections under definitions of terms. Uh, with regard to the background of the study, here you are required to provide the necessary background or context for your research problem. You need to give a necessary background. You should provide a brief but appropriate historical what? backdrop. You know, you need to look at the studies that were carried out. What, what were their findings? In, you know, briefly, provide the contemporary context in which your proposed research question occupies the central stage. You should identify key players, you know, the expert in the field and refer to the most relevant and representative publications because they are experts also in various fields of study. In short, try to point your research question in broad brushes at, at the same time bring out its significance very important you need to bring out the significance why is it important why that specific study and also what you need to take note when it comes to statement of a problem you first of all need to give a brief background about the problem your your readers need to understand what is what is before you state the problem actually you need to give a brief, a brief uh, background what has been done maybe for example training has been offered teachers were trained and then later on you should then state the research problem here you need to state it what is the problem perhaps the problem could be teachers are not integrating ICT you have to state it based on the on the on the background that you presented give a more detailed explanation about the purpose of the study than what you stated in the introduction which means relate to the literature because the moment you mention that teachers are not integrating ICT in their teaching for example you need to back it up that statement should be backed up with literature perhaps you can reference uh, other authors those who have mentioned the similar problems, for example, this is particularly important if a problem is complex and multifaceted. So um, if it's complex, you really need to back it up with uh, whatever arguments you make or statements should back it up with uh, literature there. You should describe the major issues or problems to be addressed by your research. What can your study do about the research problem? That is very important. At the end, once you, you state the problem, you need to also indicate what your study will do regarding that specific problem that you mentioned. Now, be sure to note how your proposed study builds on previous assumptions about the research problem. So that is very important there. When it comes to questions or objectives of the study, you cannot do both. You have to choose one. You can either do the questions or the objectives. So either way, you should state the research questions then if you are opting to go for research questions or then if it's objective, then you should state the objectives in an attempt to answer uh, your research questions, you know, the research problem that you have mentioned earlier because what you, the information you are going to find out should be able to assist you answer the the, the, the the stated problem. Choose one, not you shouldn't do both, you should choose one, either objectives or research questions there. I have noticed that most students, they they write, even the heading appears like questions or objectives, you have to choose one. If it's questions, you just say questions of the study. If it's objective, then we should present it as objectives of the study. Place your research question in the context of either a current hot area 
or an older area that remains viable you know sometimes you are curious you know when you do research we are curious about uh, specific ideas uh, what is trending what is happening current uh, situation current status this you know you then have to make sure that uh, it's either a hot area or an older area that remains viable indicate the main research questions or and sub questions where applicable so it depends on your study as well i always advise students that you can have even minimum let's say maximum three questions if you have one main question then at least have maybe two main questions and maybe uh, for your project research now then have maybe four or three sub questions don't have too many research questions also then it makes it a bit vague because you need to be specific you have to 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 have uh, and that is what we are going to talk about when it comes to the boundary of the study indicate the main objectives where possible if you have then opted for the objectives of the study you need to indicate rationale or significance of the study this one's also we need to you cannot do both they are all uh, referring to the importance of the study why is your study important maybe rationale you really want to give that um, background why is it important now choose either rationale or significance not both present the rationale of your proposed study and clearly indicate why it is worth doing why that study that is the question that should run at the back of your mind all the time why my study why this study why is it worth doing answer the so what questions because your readers out there would would then ask so what why this study why should anyone care you know you need to think about these questions why the study should be done very important question the specific purpose of the study should be presented there as well and you should describe how the anticipated result will impact future scholarly uh, research the, the, the theory, practice, and also the forms of interventions, or is it now for policy making? You know, you need to indicate why is it important. Is it important that you are now going to, uh, it might be, you know, you must present it in future tense. It might be important to policy makers. Perhaps you are advising the policy makers or the, to practice, like for example, maybe to teachers so that they can start either. Um, they can start either practicing uh, certain um, whatever it is that you have advised them to do, like strategies. Maybe you are coming up with new strategies that you would like teachers to adapt in their teaching. So you have to be specific. It's important to maybe the teachers so and so and so for this and that. Okay? When it comes to limitation of a study, this one very important you need to indicate that you should explain how you plan to go about conducting your research like for example this specific study is limited to two teachers maybe two secondary school teachers clearly identify the key resources the key sources you intend to use and explain how they will contribute to your analysis of the topic that one is very important there. And what are the possible limitations of your study? What I've seen all the years is that most of our students are placing the limitations in terms of financial constraints. This you should avoid. And time. You should have time. You need to make time for, the, for your study, for your project. Because it's not a, a, a funded... Um, if you are looking for funding, then you can say you might need... Um, financial support, but you cannot say that uh, you cannot make use of financial constraints as a limitation for your project research. Because you have to make sure that whatever, how many schools that you are choosing, where do you want to go to, do, to collect data, that place should be accessible to you. You don't have to take a place where it requires you to spend so much money to reach out to your participants and you need to make time you cannot say i will not have time to carry out the data you need to make time to carry out the data so that you can do your study the limitations of the study this one's here you need to set the boundaries 
of your proposed research in order to provide a clear focus. Perhaps you are saying that your study will only include maybe the grade 7 learners, is that an example, but you will exclude the other grades, maybe for example grade 5 and 6, they are not going to be part of the study, or you will not include all the teachers in the school, but then you will only look at the grade 7 teachers, is that an example there? So you have to set the boundaries of your study. Where appropriate, state not only what you will study, but what is excluded from the study. You also need to indicate, as, as an example given to you earlier, you need to give an example of what you are going to exclude or what is excluded from your study, like in terms of the participants, in terms of the um, place, like for example schools, um, all those ones you, you need to give uh, a specific, you need to be specific here. What will be included in, in terms of the exclusions? What is it that you are not going to include in your study? Maybe you will not include these uh, specific schools in that specific uh, circuit. So you have to indicate it here clearly. And when it comes to the definition of terms, if necessary, you should provide definitions of key concepts or terms, the operational terms, terms that are going to be used in your study, and you should indicate how your readers should understand them. You indicate how certain terms should be understood in your study. Depending on the number of terms, this can be presented in a table format just to make it uh, more uh, presentable so that they are not just scattered around. But when it comes to definitions of terms, you have to make sure that these are operational terms, terms that you are going to use in your study. You cannot define research here. It's not a term. If you are doing a study on perhaps teachers' use of ICT in the classroom, perhaps you would want to, to define ICT. You would want people to understand uh, the technology. Um, you want people to understand uh, specific terms. You have to define those terms. Let's, let us now look at section 2, which is literature review. Um, this literature review should be, it has to be relevant to your topic. It must be logically and clearly presented. At least eight separate uh, cited materials for your proposal because you just have to give a brief um, information on the literature that you are going to review for your main project. Review and synthesis, uh, synthesis of prior studies related to the research problem under investigation. Indicate theoretical or conceptual framework. Which one will you adapt or adapt for adopt or adapt for the proposed study? I, I've noticed that most of the students they don't understand this. A theoretical framework uh, is also uh, theories that were already proposed by the, the various theorists and you want to place your study based it on those theories. In the conceptual framework, you can develop it uh, actually by developing concept from your study or from certain theories and you would want them to adapt it for your study. And then you have to indicate how you have adapted or adopted it in your study so that your readers can, can understand that. Uh, we continue with literature review. What you need to ask yourself, there are some questions that you need to think about. What do the authors agree on? Whenever you are reviewing literature, you need to look at that. What is it that they are agreeing on? Who applies similar approaches to analyzing the research problem? So that is how we present the, the, the review of the literature. What are the major areas of disagreement? The controversies or debate whenever you identify what it is that they agree or they disagree what is it that they don't agree they all don't agree when it comes to certain aspect you have to point it out pay attention to the verbs you use to describe what an author says does example simon pendy 19 asserts you know demonstrates argues you need to know when to place such verbs. I notice that most of the students, 
you like using according to Simon 2019 for example avoid so many of according to just be more specific how does your own work draw upon uh, or depart from uh, synthesize or add a new perspective to what has been said in the literature remember everything that you review you also we need to hear your voice we need to hear your voice you need to also point out how your own work draw upon that or does it add to such perspectives you have to indicate that moving to section three uh, which is methodology here we need to look at the research design what is your research design? We will explain further on all these uh, different sections. You need to look at the population where applicable. You should indicate the population, the sample and the sampling procedure, instruments or instruments that you are going to use to collect your data, and then the whole data collection procedure, the procedure that you are going to follow when collecting the data, data analysis, as well as ethical consider considerations because that is very important in research. Let us look at um, methodology in more detail. This is the decision to why the research design and methods used were chosen over other options. You have to indicate if you are using qualitative or quantitative or both mixed method, this is where you have to make that decision in research should indicate qualitative or quantitative methods which ones are you going to adapt or employ for your study demonstrate your knowledge of alternative methods make the case that your approach is is a most appropriate and most valid way to address your research question if you are going for qualitative you have to justify that why qualitative and which types of qualitative which methods in the qualitative approach like for example case study and then you should again indicate is it a multiple case study or is it a single case study you have to be specific when it comes to research research has to do with consistency and you must be specific and you have to state you to justify your your methods no there's no wrong method but it depends on how you are going to adapt it or employ it in your study you cannot talk about qualitative and then when your readers are reading your study, they pick up methods that, uh, that is supporting quantitative. Perhaps you can maybe then use a mixed method research. Make the case that, no, you should demonstrate your, your knowledge of alternative methods as well. That you have to. And make the case that your approach is the most appropriate and most valid way to address your research question. So don't forget what we discussed in section one. All these three sections, we have to put each and every one of them into consideration. Whenever you finish presenting your section one, as you move to section two, you need to think about what you presented in section, in section one. The same with section three. Make the case that your, your, your approach is the most appropriate and most valid way to address your research question. Decide on the method and approach for qualitative and quantitative research qualitative analysis your method section needs to be more elaborate like for example if you are opting for qualitative analysis data collection processes in qualitative research has a far greater impact on the result as compared to uh, quantitative research so very important you need to take note of those especially for the students who are more interested in carrying out qualitative research or qualitative study the method section typically consists of the following sections like in in quantitative now there is a design it is uh, your your a questionnaire study or a laboratory experiment what kind of design do you choose you have to be specific as well there subject or participants who will take part in your study what kind of sampling procedure do you use? You know, there are different sampling procedures. All this further information, you can find them in different research books. The instruments, you need to take note of those. What kind of measuring instruments or questionnaires do you use? Why do you choose them? Are they valid and reliable? Ask yourself such questions. Are they valid? 
are they reliable? Can they answer your research questions? Procedure, how do you plan to carry out your study? What activities are involved? How long does it take? The procedure, that is what you need to explain when it comes to quantitative uh, research. And then your references. Very important, you need to use APA referencing style for in-text citations in the reference list and list only the literature that you actually used or cited in your proposal. Don't just place any author there because you came across them. Let us now look at some of the common mistakes in proposal writing. There is plenty of them. I've just selected a few. There might be some that you can come across. You have to read further. But these are just some of the common mistakes that uh, our students are making whenever they are writing their uh, research proposal. Failure to provide the proper context to frame the research question. Sometimes they don't. You really need to provide a proper context to frame your research questions because they need to be specific and they should, uh, you, they should be able to answer your, the problem that you have indicated, that you have identified. Some students also, we are looking at some of the common mistakes such as failure to delimit the boundary conditions for your research. Some of them, they don't even look at that. When it comes to the delimitation sections, they leave it blank. You have to delimit the boundary conditions for your research and also failure to cite landmark studies, especially those studies that are really in the area of your interest. Failure to accurately present the theoretical and empirical contributions by other researchers. I always urge my students credit source of information. Reference. You have to reference. We, it's not our ideas, yes. We construct our own knowledge, but we need to credit the previous research, people who have published before us. We need to credit source of information. Failure to stay focused on the research question. Some students divert. You have your specific research questions. Perhaps your questions was, how do teachers implement uh, online formative assessment, for example? Why do teachers implement? So don't divert from that. You must be focused on those questions. Failure to develop a coherent and persuasive what? Persuasive argument for the proposed research. You know, coherence. That is one thing that I've picked up that our, most of our students, they are not, um, when it comes to the um, pre presentation of their proposal, if you are talking about one specific idea, you have to, to finish, address that specific idea, then you move over to the new idea. You cannot talk things, mixing them together. In research, is a no-no. Okay? Then we move on. Too much detail on minor issues. Imagine you are giving a background of the study and you are just dwelling on learners' failure, learners' poor performance and presenting all these results of grade 10, sometimes it's really not a, a, a major issue. It's just minor issues, but not enough. What? Detail on major issues. Try to be very specific. Too much rambling, you know, going all over the map without a clear sense of direction. The best proposals move forward with ease and grace like seamless river, you know. You don't have to talk about uh, learners' performance here now. And then I read your fourth paragraph, you are still addressing learner's performance. Address learner's performance, finish it, before you can move over to uh, what is expected perhaps from the teachers. You cannot mix the two ideas together. Present one at a time, finish addressing it, move over to the new one. Too many citation lapses and incorrect references. Sometimes uh, our students, they just place citations because they've came across it. And it's not even, um, it doesn't even speak to what you are presenting. Or perhaps there is what we call um, washing line. 
you know when you hang your your clothes on the line so there's so many references for a specific small paragraph and you wonder who says what so you have to be specific too long or too short sometimes it's even too long if i say 12 pages be specific and summarize your ideas so that they they fit uh, on those 12 pages and at times can be too short as well failing to follow the apa style and sloping writing also so you have to make sure that you follow the apa referencing style read the guide uh, the guidelines are, are are there this is what we call public uh, information they are available on the internet and also in your library you will get uh, the guidelines apa referencing style avoid sloping writing these are some of the websites that you can look at. These are just links that can give you further information. You can, um, you can just press on your keyboard control, enter, then you can actually access that link and get more information. You know, you can search the internet when it comes to research proposal, proposal writing, and you get further information. Having said that, by the way, my name is uh, Etuna Simon Nifikwa, your tutor for 2020 onwards. And uh, you can contact me on my email address, etunangifikwa at gmail.com. And my mobile number is there, 085 And the best time to contact me is between 8.30 and 4.30. I always say to my students, drop me an email. You might be looking for me on the telephone, then you have challenges with the network, but if you drop me an email, I can easily read it and send you a reply. All the best with your research proposal. You can see on the pictures there, uh, just some of my research books that I personally um, acquired. You can read different research books, qualitative research methods, quantitative mixed method, I also have an APA manual as a researcher. Those are your resources that you need. You need to have your notebook. You need to have your stationaries. You have every time. Just write, write and write, and do not stop writing. In the same at the same time, read and read. You need to read further to understand uh, the whole concept of research proposal. All the best with your research proposal, and I thank you.